So good afternoon, Chairman Salomon Vega, Congressman Honda, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Chairman Salomon Vega, the subcommittee and its wonderful staff for organizing the historic hearing entitled Legacies of War, Unexploded Ordinance in Laos. From what I understand, this is the first hearing on the scourge of unexploded ordinance, or UXO, in Laos, a legacy of the U.S. bombing of Laos during the Vietnam War. Tragically, more than four decades after the end of the bombing, more than 300 Lao people, one-third of them children, continue to be killed or injured by UXO every year. Just this February, on February 22nd, eight children from Champasak province came upon a cluster bomb, similar to this one. They were in the rice paddies near their home. Like many bombs, these deadly weapons resemble a toy, and the children tossed around in play. The bomb exploded. Two children survived. One was severely injured, and five were killed. Beyond this terrible human toll, UXO continues to hamper economic development in one of the poorest countries in the world. Today is also significant, as mentioned earlier, because 39 years ago this week, the Senate held an historic hearing on the status of refugees in Laos. This hearing, chaired by Senator Ted Kennedy on April 21st and 22nd of 1971, helped to expose the secret bombing of Laos. The bombing had begun in 1964 and had displaced hundreds of thousands of civilians within Laos, but had never been disclosed to Congress or the American public. The bombing finally ended in 1973. This was the same year I was born in Vientiane, the capital of Laos. When I was six years old, my family left Laos due to the country's political instability. We spent a year in a Thai refugee camp and eventually resettled in, here in Virginia. Many of the 400,000 Lao refugees who now reside in the U.S. have similar stories. We were fortunate to resettle in America, but were sad to leave behind family members and friends who, fear, who we feared we might never see again. Much has changed since then. Over the past 10 years, improved relations between the Lao and U.S. governments have allowed me to travel back to Laos numerous times. Like thousands of other tourists who visit Laos every year, I feel a deep affection for the people, culture, and land that I barely remember from my childhood. Reconnecting with my Lao heritage included discovering the dark history and lingering effects of the secret war in Laos. This discovery led me to establish Legacies of War, where I currently serve as Executive Director. Legacies is the only U.S.-based organization dedicated to raising awareness about the current devastation that has resulted from the Vietnam War era bombing in Laos. Our mission is to advocate for the clearance of unexploded bombs and provide space for healing the wounds of war. Since our founding in 2004, we have worked with Lao Americans, bombing survivors, veterans, artists, non-governmental organizations, and others to establish a credible voice for reconciliation and justice. As we know, Laos is the most bombed country per capita in history. U.S. bombings left Laos contaminated with vast quantities of unexploded ordnance. At least 20,000 people have been killed or injured by UXO in Laos since the bombing ceased. I would like to share with you some other disturbing facts about the U.S. bombing of Laos and its tragic aftermath. 260 million cluster bombs were dropped in Laos during the Vietnam War. An estimated 75 million cluster bombs did not detonate, scattering throughout Lao villages, rice fields, schoolyards, pasture land, and forests. During the bombing, the equivalent of a plain little bomb was dropped every eight minutes, 24 hours a day, for nine years. About one-third, at least one-third, of the land in Laos is littered with UXO. So for more than 20 years after the war ended, Lao villagers struggled to survive among vast quantities of unexploded ordnance without any organized technical assistance or clearance program. The relationship between Laos and the U.S. was strained, and there were no humanitarian demining programs operational in the Lao NGO sector. In the 15 years since the demining program began in 1994 with the help of the Mennonite Central Committee and the Mines Advisory Group, it has grown, employing Lao nationals in nine provinces. Undoubtedly, thousands of lives have been saved and injuries avoided as a result of this work. Yet fewer than half a million of the estimated 75 million unexploded bomblets have been destroyed. And as you mentioned, Chairman, less than 1% 
of the contaminated land had been cleared. Initially, I was surprised by the small percentage of land that has been cleared. Then during a trip to Laos in 2008 as part of a Legacies of War delegation, I observed a clearance team working in the field. I witnessed the slow, dangerous, tedious process of surveying, detecting, and detonating UXO. I was humbled by the men and women we met during our trip who risked their lives daily to make the land safe for others. Formal UXO clearance in Laos is now coordinated by the Lao government's National Regulatory Authority, or NRA, with several dozen partner organizations and international donors that support the UXO clearance, victim assistance, and minor risk education. The UXO clearance sector has built up well-trained and experienced workforce. Through new, more effective equipment and careful planning, clearance teams have dramatically improved their efficiency. An official of the State Department's Office of Weapons Removal and Abatement has called the National Regulatory Authority UXO program in Laos, and I quote, one of the best programs in the world, the gold standard. The NRA's newly completed strategic plan over the next 10 years offers clear, achievable goals, including the reduction of UXO casualties from the current 300 to less than 75 per year, and ensuring that the medical and rehabilitation needs of all UXO survivors are met in line with obligations of the Convention on Cluster Munitions, an international agreement signed by 106 countries to ban the production, transfer, and sale of cluster munitions and to destroy current stockpiles. So what is the funding um, required? According to the NRA, during each of the past three years, a total of 12 to 14 million was spent for clearance goals. Funding for clearance comes from international donors, including the U.S., but the NRA estimates that the UXO sector will need at least double the amount per year to meet its 10-year goals. The problem for UXO clearance in Laos is the absence of a consistent long-term funding commitment that matches the scale of the problem. In order to buy equipment and train and maintain adequate staffing, clearance organizations working in the field must have assurances of a continued reliable stream of funding. Therefore, we recommend a U.S. commitment of $7 million to support UXO clearance in Laos in fiscal year 11, a measured increase from this year's allocation of $5 million. Thereafter, we recommend an annual U.S. commitment of $10 million over the next 10 years. This would strengthen and secure the UXO sector's capacity and bring its already effective programs to scale. This 10-year, $100 million commitment to UXO removal in Laos would total less than what the U.S. spent in one week bombing Laos. I have focused primarily on UXO clearance in this statement, but I also want to address the related need for victim assistance. Close to 40% of UXO accidents result in death, leaving many families without the primary breadwinner or caregiver. For the 60% who survive, their lives will never be the same. Almost 14,000 injuries have resulted in the loss of one limb, while close to 3,000 victims have lost two limbs. There is a serious need for better emergency health care after accidents occur, as well as longer-term needs for prosthetics, physical rehabilitation, and vocational retraining. According to the NRA, only $2.5 million a year currently goes towards victim assistance needs in Laos. Agency staff estimates that at least $5 million a year will be required to adequately help victims and their families. So what is the current U.S. funding support? The U.S. has provided about 40 million, 40 to 50 million, in funding for UXO removal in Laos over the last 15 years. The average is about 2.7 to 3 million per year. Compare this to the 7 million the U.S. spent each day for nine years bombing Laos. In other words, the U.S. spent more in three days dropping bombs on Laos than it has spent in the last 15 years cleaning them up. In fiscal year 2010, Congress designated $5 million specifically for UXO clearance in Laos, the largest amount allocated in any given year to date. Unfortunately, despite a specific congressional mandate for $5 million for bomb removal in Laos this year and in subsequent years, the Department of State is only requesting $1.9 million for next year. The funding levels for UXO clearance in Laos have always been disproportionate to the magnitude of the problem. There seems to be little regard for the level of contamination in the country or the source of the UXO. One-third of worldwide cluster munitions casualties occur in Laos, yet the funding doesn't reflect this stark reality. It has been nearly 40 years 
since the secret U.S. bombing campaign in Laos was finally revealed to Congress and the American public. Yet all these years, massive quantities of UXO remain a dangerous threat to the daily lives of the people in Laos. I'd like to mention more. She's a four-year-old girl from Tai Chok village in Siam Kuang province. Unlike hundreds of Lao children who have been killed or injured by cluster bombs each year, Moore is still alive and healthy. But she lives and plays among these deadly weapons every day. She has never known a bomb-free backyard. We must do what we can to protect children like Moore and clear the land so that she, when she walks to school or her family plows their fields, everyone returns home safely at the end of the day. We should want this for more and the generations that will follow her. The problem of UXO in Laos has been allowed to persist far too long. Too many innocent lives have been lost, but it is not too late to stop this senseless suffering. This is one of those rare problems, rare policy problems with a clear and effective solution. The U.S. has a responsibility to clean up the unexploded bombs it left behind in Laos and to provide support for those who have been harmed since the end of the war. It would require only a relatively modest increase in U.S. funding to dramatically improve clearance activities and victim assistance in Laos. Clearing cluster bombs in Laos and supporting those injured by them is an act of humanity and decency. It is the right thing to do. The State Department must make a sustained commitment to solving this problem. We recommend an allocation of at least $7 million next year, followed by a subsequent increase of $10 million per year over the next 10 years. Only with this kind of consistent support will the scorch of UXO in Laos finally come to an end. Thank you, Chairman Paloma Vega, Congressman Honda, for the opportunity to offer our statement today. We appreciate the attention that you've brought onto this important issue. Thank you very much.